whatever career stage, one of the challenges is to have access to lab environment where we can test what we learn. Having a cloud lab makes it possible to access the lab anywhere uh, at any time. And one of the biggest advantages of having a cloud lab is that you don't need a, a powerful laptop to host ENG on your local machine. So Google Cloud gives you $300 worth of credits, which you can use over a year as a trial. And um, we can host ENG on Google Cloud, and that makes it possible for us to access the ENG environment from anywhere at any time for almost a year, depending on um, how powerful virtual machine you are hosting. So here you can see I'm logged on to the Google Cloud platform and I have 72 pounds and 48 days left. So I've been using this for almost a year and I still have 72 pounds left on it. And I have used it quite a lot. Uh, at one stage I had a VM running for almost five, five to six months and um, it used about 150 pounds and now i just run or use it whenever i need to so i thought i'll do a quick demo of um, of google cloud and um, how i use it and a couple of scripts which i've wrote just to make um, things easier and quicker so i'll go ahead and create a new project. So the first thing you do is when you log on to the console, you create an account, log in, and then you create a new project. So I'll give it a name. I'll call it demo evng and then create. Okay, I think because I've uh, just deleted some a project as well. And it's just giving me some notifications. So I can ignore that. So I've got this project. I'll click on it. So I've uh, come to the project page and it shows our project name here. So the first thing I'll do is activate Cloud Shell. And soon we will see that the bottom window will load the Cloud Shell. Okay, so once the console is loaded, the Cloud Shell, I need to create a nested image to run EVNG. And we'll use this command to create the image. I'll, I will put the details in the description or share a GitHub link with all the information. So while this is creating the image to save time, what I will do is I will create open another tab. And what we'll what we will do is we will um, upload the IOL images which I need to run on EVNG. So if I just click on search and search for storage, click on storage. And create a bucket. I'll call the bucket EVNG1234. So the name needs to be unique. And then select a single region. And I will select Finland, which is the cheapest in Europe. And then create. Okay, at the bottom we can see that our image is created. 
So I will close the console and create a folder called images. So this is important because I have created written a shell script which uses the images folder name. So once I've created the folder, I will go ahead and upload the files I need. So this has started to upload the files to the bucket. If I go back and close this window and then go to create a VM. Create. Let's call it EVNG. Region, I will select Finland. So for this demo, I will just use one CPU with 3.65 gig of RAM. Usually I've been running two CPUs with 7.5 gig of RAM. Uh, if you're running on five to 10 devices, even one CPU with four gig of RAM is enough. Next, I will change the boot image. Go to custom images. And that's the image which we just created. And give it 100 gig. And then allow HTTP traffic. You can enable HTTPS on EVNG. So you can select HTTPS as well. And this will create our virtual machine. And soon we should see a public IP address here, which we can use to connect to it. But by default, the root login is not enabled. So there will be SSH connect button here once the uh, VM is up and we will um, just hit that SSH button and that will open this SSH se session to the VM. Okay, so we've got our public IP and SSH will open a browser window or a terminal window, whatever you want to call it. Okay, once we get the prompt, um, I'm going to copy and paste a shell script. Okay, so let's do first thing we do sudo minus i. And then we need to install evng first. So I will go ahead and install eve. So this is So this installation is going to take a while. Um, I can pause the video or speed up the video, but personally, I like to watch the whole process. So I think um, I'll probably leave it running so you can see what's going on.
Okay, once the installation is complete, we need to reboot. So I'll give it a few minutes and pause the video and wait for the VM to come back up. Okay, um, when you get this prompt, we need to press Control C and then sudo minus I. Enter the root password. So nothing is displayed on the screen. You just type the password and press Enter, and it's asking to repeat the password. So I'll enter the same password. So now it's asking me to give a host name. We already have even G. So okay, example.com. Okay. So this is important, we need to leave that to DHCP. Enter, leave the NTP server direction, enter. I'm sorry if I was hitting the keyboard too hard. So now it will reboot again, and again, we will wait a few minutes for the VM to come back up. Okay, so we've got the prompt back. Next thing we need to do is we need to create the firewall rules. So if I just search for firewall, firewall VPC network, so create firewall rule. So I'll call this eventg ingress. It's going to be ingress rule, allow so I'll just select the whole in this project so all so everything is in this or all instances in this network I can select. I will just select service account for the project. And then for source, you can either say anywhere or put your home IP address and then select TCP. And here for this, I'm just going to say allow all ports. You could say 32,768 above because that's what Eve uses for Telnet. And we need to create another rule for egress. So we'll say ENG egress select egress TCP and then create. Okay, so once this is created, if I go back to my VM instances, and if we browse to this IP address. So by default, because we have enabled HTTPS, it will open HTTPS. I'm just going to remove the S and then browse to HTTP and to the public IP, which we have on cloud. And we've got the evng login. So 
the default credentials admin ease. Okay, next thing which I'm going to do is just create a log, call it test. In fact, close this and I'm going to import a lab. Open. Right, so we've got our lab, but you can see we don't have the images yet. So if I just search for Cisco IOL, we can see this is disabled. So the next thing I'm going to do is SSH to our VM. And then I'll do sudo lines high and then I'm just going to create event g initial setup dot sh copy this script. So what this script is doing is it, it will copy the images and create the IOU, IOURC file and it will install some Python packages and create a workspace named virtual environment. So again I will share this script on GitHub okay, and then I will run this script with bash so you can change the mode and make it executable i will just run it with bash give it the script name and then i need to give it the bucket name where i have created so where i put my images so the image is important the folder images because the script uses this folder to copy uh, the bucket name can be anything if you do name the folders different just modify the script okay so let's see if this works so this will enable the root login as well so now it's copying the images from our bucket And I'm also installing DHCP server so we can use the devices in EVNG to get an IP address from the EVNG server. to the EVE topology. Okay, so now we have Cisco IOL. And just need to make sure that this network is Cloud 1. So Cloud 1. 
So what the script has also done is it started a DHCP server on pnet0 on the evng. So if I just do ifconfig here. So when I run that script, it's also assigned an IP address on pnet1 and started a DHCP server. You can look at the detail in the script details, uh, the scope and the pool it's configured. The next thing I'll we'll do is start a couple of routers. Okay, so the devices have some pre-config in that topology. But what I want to show is Okay, so we can see that R1 got an IP address from the ACP. Hopefully R2, the R2 has got an IP address from our DHCP. Okay, and next thing I want to do is, if I just take the public IP address of my instance, so you can get that from the console, so this public IP address, and then if I go to my terminal and do ssh root uh, so here we can see that it prompts me for a password and I can log on to the instance so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add my ssh key to that instance. So if I do SSH copy ID root at we give it the public ID in the password. Once the key is added, um, it will log into the instance without prompting me for the password. Okay, and once you have added that, you can go ahead and um, disable the root login password. So it's not open to the world to log in. And it will only use your SSH key. So if I just show you again, so it just logs in without asking. So this is passwordless SSH. So this is one of the good things. And one of the, the final thing I want to show is So if I ping my router from evng, we can see that we can ping both routers. And if you are doing any NetMiko or any Python or Paramiko, any scripting, then I would suggest that you use visual code I'm just opening visual code, it's opening in the background. Okay, and if you go to remote server, here we can add the remote server and add our even GVM. And what this will do is it will um, it will give us um, the editor in VS Code where we can um, create new files and run our scripts. So again, give it the public IP, use the SSH config, 
So a post is added, and if I do connect, so the connection will open in a separate window. So what this will do is it's it will open the SSH session. So once it's connected, if I go to open a folder, we can see that it has access to the to the file system which is on my EVNG. So if I click on workspace, which was created during the initial setup. So the workspace virtual environment was created by the shell script, which I ran earlier. So in here, so if we can see we have a virtual environment files. If I just quickly create a file, um, so as a test, I'm just going to create a file for to run Parameter. So give new file name and call it I think I created directory in the file. I need to show Python. Okay, this will open a file here. I'm just going to copy the contents of the file which I have on my local PC. Okay, so you can see it, it's pretty easy to do the to type your code on VS Code and then save it. Once I save it. I should see that file. So if I change my directory to workspace, LS, so we can see that parameter show file is appeared on my EVNG. So I will activate the virtual environment. So we need to do source, then activate. And then here I can run my scripts. Okay, so it says it's unable to connect to host this IP address because there is no SSH configured. Just to save time, I'm going to quickly copy some SSH config onto the couple of devices which we have. And let's run the script again. Okay, so we can see that it's given us some output. And what the script is doing is it's just doing a show run. Okay, so let's say if I create another file, and this one I will call netmeco. Okay, and then let's give it two. Okay. Now if I go back to my PM and OS, you can see the net info file script is here. Again, I can run it. Okay, and we can see it's got the output from our second router. So in the script, we are only getting that line, which has Cisco iOS in it. We're not printing anything else. In the first script, we printed everything. In the second script, we are 
looking for only one line. Okay, so this first line and nothing else. And if you wanted to run something on an external device, so for example, if I have a script for netconf on a Cisco sandbox, so if I copy that script, create a new file, let's call it netconf example.py copy the contents here, save this file okay it's looking for the end lab let me just put that file as well Let's go back and run the script again. Okay, so now it's run the netconf script against the Cisco always on sandbox and given us the output. Okay, and this is the iOS iOS XE device which is run it against. Okay, so you can see that um, it's pretty easy to set up an online account and online lab if you want to learn and practice. So you can also, so if you didn't want to use this SSH, you could even use PuTTY or Terminal and run your scripts that way. So if I, so here I'm already SSH to the EVNG box and I can go to I do cd workspace ls so I can see all the files which we have been creating in VSS code. Because it's a Linux box and you don't have the GUI and if you wanted to use an editor, you will have to use nano or vi or vim, which are very geeky. Uh, I'm not very good with them, but nano is easy, vi and vim are, uh, you need to know how to use them. So that's, uh, that's why I use uh, VS Code to write my code locally. And when I save it, it gets saved on the remote host automatically. And then you just run your scripts from the terminal. So if you have a PuTTY session open, you can run your scripts in PuTTY, write your code in VSS, and everything will be saved. Once you are done, if you want it to turn off your VM, you just select the VM and turn it off. You only get charged while the VM is running. When it's not running, you don't get charged. So you get 365 days or $300, which equates to roughly 224 pounds. And it can last you for almost a year, depending on what sort of topology and what sort of devices you are running. So just to give you a rough estimate, if you are running one CPU, four gig of RAM, it can last you for a year. If you're running something like 16 gig of RAM um, with eight CPUs, that will probably last you six months if you're running it all the time. But if you run it for half an hour, an hour, and turn it off when you're not using it, you can make it last for almost a year. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop this VM for now because I still have 48 days which I can use and quite a lot of credits remaining. Okay, so I, I hope this has been helpful um, in setting up your cloud lab where you can run, learn Python and do some automation. I hope the shell script helps 
and learning some of the tasks which you can do quickly rather than doing it manually.